I will start class at 3 5. Let people join. Hi Sandosh. Okay, hi guys. Uh, good afternoon. So this is um, PMRF and PTL TA scheme. So where I will be taking on your doubts and I will be solving some questions which will be uh, helpful in your uh, course uh, ME86 uh, basics of finite element method. So okay. Uh, So these tutorials why they are helpful is because first of all there is no as such interaction as per se with uh, with the learners and the one who is taking the course so this is that platform where you would be taking your personal doubt and as well as uh, we will be helping you to uh, make a strategy how to solve these questions so hence uh, this is very this was a new thing which started from previous year, previous semester where uh, there was a dry run of the these type of uh, classes and this time PMRF students have given this opportunity to uh, make this MOOC courses uh, better. So so today I have only four questions as you can see in your uh, right side of the screen or in the recording it will be there that number of questions are written and one who is uh, taking it live then I will be updating which question are, are we in so that there is better tracking of the questions you can ask uh, doubt anytime and it will be full interactive class and uh, as well as if you uh, if you want to ask question at the end that is also fine we will wait for another three minutes then we will start So I'm a PhD student in IIT Bombay and my screen is, let me share my screen again. I think I should start now. Okay, this is a very simple question. 
So this I've just taken as a test question. So that everything fits well. So it is just W into V dash is same as So here the first question goes as this is the nothing can be more simple so like we have to just apply the product rule so dash meaning here is uh, differentiation with respect to an uh, independent quantity and so x is independent quantity as well as w and v these are function of x so we get w x and v x let me just okay. so these are function of x now one three provide the product rule which says that anything which is getting differentiated as a product will individually get uh, differentiated. So it's straightforward question. So the answer is uh, like B part. This is just the test question. We will move on to our course related question. So, which is which of the following is not true about approximation function? So, you all know what approximation functions are. Okay, those who don't know what approximation functions are. Uh, let me write full so approximation they are always used in engineering at different stages so depending on that we kind of abstract the whole system and we try to convert the physical system into a mathematical model so several stages mean that it depends on what we require from the system information like if we need to know just the displacement or the deformation then what kind of approximations we should take or do we need the stress and strain analysis so then we need some other approximations so that is the key uh, like, so those choices an engineer had to make And that is the, I think, main part of engineer. Yes, any doubt, Sandosh? What work? Yes, yes, yes. It's, it's kind of shape vector. I'm coming to that. So this is a full story. So be with me. Uh, so the approximation, why they are needed. So hence, uh, for something which we don't know, let's say if some let's say this kind of structure is there and we don't know how uh, how this is there but we know the values at this point as well as at this point all right so these two points we know how the system behaves so at point one and point two we know how the system is but we don't know what in middle it is there so and that is governed by something called governing equation and now what we do is we try to approximate it 
so we the first approximation which comes to our mind is a straight line all right so that is one approximation then another thing which is there is called one second quadratic element so this is kind of quadratic element so this will try to fit it but it cannot fit it perfectly as you can see right so this is the, uh, another kind of approximation but why to approximate it because we don't know there is no current uh, there is no existing method to solve the system analytically all right when the system become complex uh, we don't have much resources to solve it analytically so hence we go for numerical and numerical fem is one way to go in which we approximate so this is kind of approximation it has three point three control points right so one and two are fixed and three is only it is able to move all right so this is one approximation then this is another approximation then there is one more ad hoc approximation i can take is like this which is not going from one or two okay so this is called constant solution this is called linear solution this is called constant approximation and this is called linear which is two points two control points and similarly quadratic or quad element But as you can see, the exact solution is very different. So what we do is we try to take more advanced, uh, higher order terms and try to fit this curve. That is one thing. Another is we can divide this part into different different. Uh, okay, let me divide this. Okay, so we are dividing into different different subdomains. So those are called elements. Okay. So these are called elements. And now, in each element, we try to take this. Let's say linear. Let us take linear element and try to fit. this is uh, one finite element solution by linear element now we can take quad also so so this is my quad so i will fix two points one and two and try to fit it as you can see when it is small in a small area it is easily able to fit this quad element right so like on increasing the order we can you know, reduce the errors that is main thing what i mean by errors are the these area like the difference between the exact solution and the approximated solution so this is called error or residual these are our errors there is one more thing that as you can observe in the final this area that there is no more element so that is one more thing which you have to take care in finite element method the discretization how the discretion should be and how effective effective it is all right so these are error and these error can be reduce using either higher order element or discretization to the final level all right so there those are called h refinement and p refinement 
I have uh, tried to keep all, uh, tell this in first tutorial also. So you can check out the YouTube link. Okay, for now the question is, which of the following is not true about this approximate approximation functions? So as we know that approximation enter engineering analysis at several stages, the division of the whole domain into the finer uh, finite element. So the discretion into the smaller domain, it introduces an error. So the red areas are the errors. And what we are doing is we are trying to uh, reduce this error. Because if you will reduce this error, it will get near to the exact solution. All right. So now in this figure, as you can see, similar thing is happening. So now instead of one approximating function, I am taking six approximating function. All right. So all these domains are not equal. So they are non-uniform mesh. All right. And final thing is to sum up everything and try to find the uh, total error try to minimize that so that is our main aim and here also you can see that these are the errors and we try to minimize it so our first statement is they have to be assumed so yeah actually we are assuming it so we are assuming that so this is our choice our assumption what we wanted to take okay so this is true next is they should satisfy the boundary condition now boundary conditions are always input in the system okay so like the boundary conditions are uh, the places where the approximate solution are equal to the exact solution all right so that is also true then they always have to be polynomial function so here we are we went from constant to quadratic and then we can move on to cubic and other function but they don't necessarily have to be polynomial actually they can be trigonometry also they can be sum of power series also like some of other uh, exponential functions also so they need not to be only polynomial all right so just for the sake of Taylor expansion we take these uh, polynomial which are the very good approximation by the way so uh, they are often taken as pol polynomial but it is not necessarily that it had to always be polynomial function so that is our false statement And finally they help us in defining how the primary variable will behave so as i have told you from the controlling of the control point we can see that behavior of the uh, primary value primary values mean the exact solution how the exact solution would have been okay so any doubt up till now sandosh do you have still some doubt okay okay so uh, this is one part where we describe and then we try to uh, approximate and finally uh, what we do we assemble the whole system and try to solve it in one shot and then we get these points the value at these points all right as well as the function which is uh, like this linear or quadratic function so that is called assembly of the solution so today what I will do is I will take a very uh, basic example of a circle okay and then we will look at the whole finite element process through it so before that we have one more question so now in this equation I think you would have been seeing the equations now the governing equation the boundary condition so here in this uh, question what 
which of the following is the primary variable variable in the equation so the equation is given as such so there is a four, uh, fourth order is the fourth order in x and now we want to find the primary variable so primary variable is always the um, always something which is very big very kind of um, which considers the essential boundary condition like what at the ends how it is behaving so those are called essential boundary condition all right uh, it is must known thing the essential bound boundary condition and uh, so w here which is our primary variable because let's say let's take an example of a displacement axial displacement so the equation is in form of pa d2 y1 dx square plus k1 so here as you can see that y is axial displacement so if a rod is there so this kind of displacement or deformation this it is denoted by y but at this point at the cantilever point if we if we are taking cantilever we will see that y is zero okay it is a essential boundary condition so displacements mainly are essentially bound essential boundary condition as well as these two are the primary variable okay so this is also straight forward only okay so any doubt up till now okay now we have a task like in this class only it's not homework kind of thing so let's assume that uh, we don't know the value of pi okay the value of pi we don't know let's say 3.14 something so we don't know the value actually uh, do anybody know how this pi came into the picture like how people knew the value of pi anyone okay so so pi is always prevalent in circles right yeah p by d right so p is perimeter perimeter of a circle and d is diameter of a circle so if you put the formulas 2 pi r by 2 r so it comes out to be pi all right so uh, in ancient mathematician so when the pi value was not uh, discovered yet so do you know how they try to find the value of uh perimeter of the circle anyone yes approximation using squares and much more than squares also like squares polygon right so one easy way is you take a string or a yeah approximately with polygon but one more practical way is you take a string and try to put it in the perimeter all right and then you take this string and kind of uh, put in a scale and then find out the length that is also one way right so there are two ways by which we can find the perimeter so now i will explain what those two ways mean with uh, finite element method reference okay so our task here is to find the perimeter of the circle and let's say we don't know it is 2 pi r 
but we have to prove that it is 2 pi r all right so there are three basic features of finite element method let me write it down so our task when parameter of the circle and upon doing that we also have to cover three basic points of finite element method first is the division first point is division of the parameter of a circle into the collection of linear segment So line segment mean we are taking linear element so what i was saying telling about the thread is the thread kind of gives us higher order approximation okay so because we can uh, the string can take any shape so it can it is something called shape function right uh one sandosh it is like the string can be can it can called a shape function So that and for now we are taking just the line segment with the linear element the second thing which you will see is writing an equation first step is nothing but discretization the second is writing that equation for what for the quantity of interest which is a parameter perimeter of the circle over an element that is important first step is discretization and uh, theoretically speaking the discretization should be such that it should have infinite elements because circle is every moment it's changing its direction right so it's like we have to take infinite dimension uh, to get the parameter of the circle if you are using the polygon but we just have to go to some degree of accuracy so we don't care that about infinite we have to care about finite so hence the name from the finite element method so we have a choice of accuracy like uh, if somebody is happy with 3.14 why go for the higher term all right but again it uh, it is very necessary that uh, up to where the accuracy you have to get because those create different kind of problem something called approximation errors so the second step is writing for only one element now we have converted the whole domain into sub dimension or sub which called element now we will define 
everything for an element. Then the third, which is like last step, is assembly. Assembly of this element, which is nothing but adding of this element in this case. You will also see an additional thing, let's say point number four, that how we can achieve accuracy. Achieving accuracy means minimization of the errors, like minimization of the red part. Oh, sorry. So we look at this. Now, so the our task is to find the perimeter of the circle. Now, just for reference sake, I have taken a pentagon, and now as you can see, there is lot of red part in it. So, what I have done next is try to more discretize it. So now, as you can see, the red part is very less. So red part is nothing but error. If someone will uh, compare these two figures, he will find that upon increasing the number of sides of a polygon, uh, we get, we kind of reduce the error. All right, so that is one observation. Now, how to find? This? So this is the first step. Step number one. Step one, and it's called something. Discretization. Okay, so this is called uh, discretization, and then next step is to define uh, something called arc length. So before going uh, some point for step one arc, this domain is represented by the collection of finite number of n subdomains. Which is called uh, these subdomains are called the elements, and the collection of elements is called finite element mesh. So this, so uh, this polygon, this polygon is called finite element mesh. Okay, and the point, these points. Are called finite element. Let me make it bigger. So these points are called nodes. These points are called nodes. And so when these elements are equal. Then it's called uniform mesh. So, for example, now it's uniform mesh. But it could be non uniform mesh also. One example of non uniform mesh I have already covered in question number two. Yes, so this is in non uniform mesh. As you can see, this distance and this distance are not equal. Okay. So we can solve either by um, either way, but for symmetry we take in uniformity into account for now. Now step two is
element equations. So this is the uh, so discretion anybody can do. Actually, you have to just um, convert the whole body into smaller pieces. Okay. The main problem comes when we are defining for one unit what the elemental equations would be. So that is where the major task is. And uh, if you are starting from a scratch, like if you are applying finite element method from a scratch to a entirely different new system, then this is what this is the procedure. First is discretization. Then for one unit, how you can define everything. So that is a different form of art. And So first of all, as you have studied it, uh, in Newton's law, like you draw FBD of the body. Okay. So here something like that is done. Like an element is isolated first. So it is uh, the first element is taken and for example here that element information is this okay so it's like the length of this if we sum up the length of these all these things then we will get the perimeter of the circle so that is our key interest here so that length is com computing by using some appro appropriate method So let me isolate that. This is some circle and let's say this is that element. So I have exaggerated this element, but it will, this will be very small. Now just let let's draw a circle here, or oh sorry, a triangle here with some theta and now this is our arc length this is our arc length and this is our line length okay And our aim is to find this line length such that it is near to arc length. So that is done by more and more discretization. Okay. What do we know is we know about this radius r. All right. So in, in this triangle, we can easily find out the elemental equation. So let's call this line length as h. So this h is given as okay. How it come like this? Is we have converted this triangle into two parts. 
and from each triangle we are finding this h by 2 okay so uh, upon doing that now we have defined this line length and this is our typical element uh, characteristic so actually when we will sum up these all these we will get our uh, perimeter so this was step number two step number one was discretization then step number two is this now yes so as you can see this theta if we will sum up all these theta we will get 360 degree right so similarly just we have to sum up all the polygons and the length of the polygon and we will get the parameter of the circle so we come to the step number three now Step number three is called assembly. So here the approximate value. So the line length is approximate value. Any doubt up till now? So the approximate value of the parameter of the circle is obtained by putting together the element properties in a meaningful way. What is meaningful way is uh, for our case is just summing up. So we know that if we join all these uh, lines, we will get our parameter. But in FEM, in physical process, physical system, it could be anything which is very clear to the physics of the system. So here. here the physics of the system is very important so hence uh, the governing equations are of importance so as you can see the element equation come from the governing equation as well as the boundary condition as well as the force uh, or the loading what the, is there so that is converted into one unit of the whole domain and then next part is assembly in assembly we try to uh, make a system such that we provide the input and we get the output so input could be the loading on whole domain and output could be the displacement or deformation or it could be anything which has um, physical meaning so it can be stress strain so depending upon which engineering aspects we need so that is required now so this is called assembly Okay, and in our case, the value is n. So from element, to, so here h e h e means like for one element, alright? Theta e, theta e for one element. So this is our parameter and which will be equal to okay 
so pn here represents the approximation of the actual parameter and if mesh is uniform which is in this case so he is same for each of the element hence theta e can be written as 2 pi by n okay all right so this is our approximated answer okay now we have to uh, compare it with the exact answer to find the error and then we'll try to minimize it or we can devise method how we can minimize it So it's like convergence and error estimate. So we we know for a circle it's the perimeter. So I will write p exact is equal to two pi r. Okay. And now p n with n tending to infinity. Should also go to two pi. That is my saying. Okay. So what is an error? So the new page. Error equal to modulus of SC minus HE. So SC was our arc length, and HE was our line length. So how the error is defined? Error in the approximation is equal to the difference between the length of the sector. And that of the line segment. Okay, so now we know that SC value, SC is nothing but r theta e. So for very small angle, it can be equal to r theta, e. and so putting on the value, error for one element is equal to r. Now sc is theta e. Theta is given was two pi by n minus two sine pi by n. So this is error in one element. Now total error, which we are showing by e, is nothing but n times e of e, which is nothing but two r. Pi minus n sine pi by n, okay, which is nothing but two pi r 
minus Pn. So P minus Pn. So that was our error. So which proves the total error is equal to the exact solution minus the approximated solution. All right. So that's what we started with. So this is called global error. So global error. Global error. Return cluster. Okay. Now what you have to show is as n goes to infinity e should go to 0 right that was the ideal case so let x which is equal to 1 by n okay. now pn is equal to 2 r n 9 pi by n limit and tending to infinity x tending to 0. So when n is infinity, x is equal to 0. So using a orbital rule, 2 pi r okay so pn comes to 2 pi r so n e n e n goes to 0 when limit n tending to infinity okay so this completes the proof of convergence uh, anybody any doubt until now now let me start again okay so our task was to find perimeter of the circle and also we were to see four basics of FEM. First is how division is done, so how discretion is done and second is writing the equation over an element. So for an element we are defining element everything now second third is assembly of those elements so that we get meaningful answer or something which is quality of interest global quantity of interest quantity of interest sorry and next we how to achieve accuracy and how we can minimize the error so first discretion ad hoc discretion was done then we try to generalize it by using n polygon uh, n-sided po polygon and then we the next step we saw the theory about arc length and line length and how one is approximated and other is exact and there is one more thing that if you take any two point in the circle let's say you take any two point in the circle and if you kind of maximize it to some degree so my point being this is this point and this is this point what you will observe that exact solution let's see that is exact solution so there will be some curvature involved in the exact solution Okay, some degree of curvature but for uh, the approximated solution it will be the straight line because we are taking line segment so hence there will be always some degree of error 
unless we go from n equal to 1 to infinity okay so only way by which you can reduce this error is by taking n to infinity so this is our error and this is our exact as well as approximated okay so we try to find out what this he value is for one element and using geometry and then using uh, these triangles dividing the triangle into two now next step was assembly where the approximate value of the parameter of the circle was obtained by putting all these length segments together um, which gave us the approximated parameter of the circle so this is our approximated so if here only if we take n equal to infinity then only we will get the pn is equal to 2 pi r and how we do this by using convergence in error estimate where we try to uh, create a relationship between them at how from that point we achieve to uh, 2 pi r okay so this is one way of tackling the problem another way we can tackle we would have tackled this problem is by taking some other shape so we have taken line segment we could have taken some other shape so as i was talking about the string so actually string is bendable in shape all right so hence it can it could it also defines higher order of um, higher order polynomials so as mentioned before what the constant solution is and then what is first uh, the linear elements is then quadratic element then cubic element so the, all those things can be incorporated here and the but from that point we can increase the accuracy or decrease the error or another way was taking n equal to very large number so when we take n equal to very large number it is called h refinement like we are describing the more finer meshes and other way is because if you will take more finer then the polygon will look like circle right so that was the idea another was to Uh, we still have three minutes so let me draw that so let's say this is our approximated okay let's say this is our circle which is exact and now we are dividing this circle into some parts so some coarse mesh not the finer mesh and now I am taking a quadratic element. So this is my quadratic element, and I am trying to fit it in the curve. So you can see it can easily fit. Okay. So this is what I was saying that if it had been a linear element, there would have been error. But these errors are reduced using this orange element or quadratic element okay so so this is called p refinement p conversion sorry p conversion and increasing the number of n is called h refinement or h conversion or H refinement
I hope you uh, took something from this class. So this was just very basic example of how we can use FEM. So similar approach can be applied to large problems also. The key thing will be step number two, where we are finding step number two, where we are finding the uh, element equation. Because here, where every all the things all hell break loose, and where we have to play with the physics of the problem and try to quantify those physics into mathematical model. So that is a huge task. Then next is conversion. Sorry, there is a step three which is assembly. Here, what is important is how the system is computed. So here the system, uh, how how much time the system will take to generate what type of accuracy that is of importance here. So and how we should assemble it, how we should solve it. So assembly and the solution procedure, it go hand by hand. And finally, we look at how we can optimize these method to better get our accuracy versus error chart or accuracy versus the compression cost chart okay so i will end my lecture here anybody have any doubt i'm still for here for five minutes Okay, so up there is how to choose shape function for any problem. What should be the criteria? Okay, so up there is asked this question. How to? Uh, Sandra, do you want to ask something? Okay, so the shape function is actually uh, there are two two ways by which if if the mesh is discrete enough, then we can use linear elements also. But if you go for higher order. It should be worth it. Like, if you wanted to approximate just this circle, uh, let me share this again. Okay. So let's say we have to. We have exact solution like this. Okay. And we are trying to. Approximate is using quadratic elements. So, so these are my quadratic elements. So it's kind of I am wasting my uh, computational power, alright. And for now, it looks very easy that you no, know, we can solve it by using linear elements also. But the thing is, we don't know beforehand. Okay. So why, whether it is this solution or the red one. So hence the choice of shape function is first because if you go for higher order, the compression cost will increase. Okay, and if you go for lower element, there might be increasing error. So the H refinement and P refinement are have to be done in uh, some order so that we get a optimized result. Okay, so hence this is the way we choose the shape function. And the shape function need not to be polynomial, as I have mentioned before. And there are many conditions where there are many situations where we try to put approximate solution of the simple problem. What I mean by that is, let's say we have a cantilever tapered cantilever beam. Okay, and now we will use approximation function of just a normal cantilever beam. So we can use this approximate solution which is a sorry. so we can use this approximate to that okay that would work so but actually we cannot use this for some other kind of beam okay so that is my point like choice of the shape function and these things had to be done very carefully 
and uh, with taking everything into, into account such as um, what kind of solution it had been like that is also one thing which engineers had to do is try to get an idea what kind of system it is so that what kind of method can be applied okay any more question okay if there are no questions i will just end the class thank you all i will stop recording now thanks doctor okay thank you big girl Okay, bye.